know the truth about yourself, everybody's comments are simply opinions. Because the only thing that's true about you is the truth that the manufacturer told you about yourself. Everything else is opinion. Isn't that wonderful? That means nobody knows the truth about you. This also brings up a point that we mentioned last time. Please turn to John 8 one more time. And let's find out why it's important for you to discover the truth about yourself. And also to understand that Jesus came to this earth not to tell you the truth about God. I was under the impression that Jesus came to this earth to tell us about God. But that's why we never discovered ourselves. But really, Jesus came to this planet to tell us the truth about ourselves. Because it was us who fell. It was us who lost contact with the manufacturer. It was us who had no idea of what was in the mind of the manufacturer about us. It was us who began to measure our abilities against creation. We started using our environment to determine what we could do, which is completely wrong. And that's what it means to fall. The word sin is, oh boy, help me, okay. The word sin is not what you've been thinking it was in most cases. Sin is not cussing and lying and stealing and fornication and drinking and smoking and you know, all them things you call sin. That's not sin. They are the effects of it. These are symptoms. As a matter of fact, when Jesus came, when you read the book of Romans chapter 6 or Hebrews chapter 9, when it talks about the work he did, it says he came to set us free from not sins, Sin, singular. The word is singular in the Greek language. Because sin produces sins. What is sin? Sin is rebellion against the known will or intent of the manufacturer. I repeat. Sin is rebellion against the known will of God. Therefore, if you don't know what God intended for you to be and to do and to accomplish, if you don't know that, then you live below that privilege. And God calls that sin. I'll show you how it's verified. In order for you <laughs> to live by truth, and not by facts, you got to use faith. Let me try it again. In order for you to live according to the truth that you know, in the environment of the facts that exist, you must have the element of what? Faith. What is faith? Faith is being able to see beyond the facts the truth about your life. Yes? Now, they're ready. The Bible, the manual says, that which is not of faith is rebellion against God's will. Sin. <laughs> that means once you discover who you really are, no matter what people say, what they do, or what's around you, you have to believe what you know, not what you see. And in order to do that, you have to live by faith. You know, faith is not 
hoping and guessing. Faith is based on something very solid. It is based on the truth about you that hasn't been manifested yet. And you're on your way to it. So faith is real. That's why Paul calls faith substance. It's not some nebulous, uh, uh, untangible thing. It's, it's a real thing. It's like someone saying, look, I'm going to write this check. Why? I can't see my bank account. But I know what's deposited there. I put the money there. I put it there and only I could draw on this account. So you write the check even though the bank is closed on Sunday. That's faith. Now that's not, now listen to me. I hope to help you. Therefore, you can't write what you call, quote unquote, a faith check. Some of you got a strange definition of faith checks. A faith check is, means nothing is there. No, that's not faith check. A faith check is you know what's there. But you can't see it at the moment. So you write a check in the presence of somebody who haven't seen the bank, but because you know what's there, you can write it with confidence. I hope that reduces return checks. <laughs> Say amen loud. Yes, I've seen some strange believers who believe that God is a, a witch. God is not a witch. <laughs> God gives you strength to get wealth so you can put it in the bank, so you can write a check with faith in what's in the bank. <laughs> Clap. <laughs> that's a faith check John chapter 8 verse 32 then you will know the truth what did he come to tell us the truth he came to show us the truth he came to bring knowledge of the truth he says and if you know this truth about everything what happens to you what happens to you? It makes or sets you free. I want you to make a solid note in your notes. Truth produces freedom. Governments don't produce it. Legislation don't produce it. Senate, Congress, Parliament, no one can produce freedom. Freedom comes from nobody. As a matter of fact, when a man or woman knows the truth, prison becomes a living room oh god help me because truth cannot be bound it itself becomes freedom so what does paul do when they lock him up he begins to sing because he knew that according to the truth about him and the truth about him was what the truth was I must preach before the king before I die. Did Jesus say that to him? Hello. I want to show you how powerful truth is. Paul says, Jesus said, Paul, you will preach to Gentiles and you will go before the king and you will preach the kings. That was the truth about Paul's life. So when they put him in jail, Paul remembered, I haven't spoken to the king yet. So this is not permanent. This is a fact. Hallelujah. That's why you must discover the principle God laid down for your life. Because that becomes the source of your freedom. Now, how does the freedom happen? That means if people say things to you that are not in harmony with what you know about yourself, then it doesn't put you in bondage. I feel like shouting all by myself because you don't want to shout. In other words, if you know what he says about you and they disagree with it, you're free from their disagreement. That's why when you know the truth, the truth sets you free from people. Hallelujah. So when people call you names, it becomes like water on a duck's back. It just rolls off and you keep on quacking. Just go right on quacking. 
carrying out your business, fulfilling God's purpose. So when you know the truth about yourself, then discouragement is not your friend. <laughs> you cannot depress a person who knows the truth. I hope this helps you. You know, they got all kind of treatments for depression. And some of you saints need to hear this tape five times. Because I've met so many depressed Christians. And you one of them always depressed by what people did, what they said, what they felt, how they treated me, how they looked at me, what they, what they didn't do. And you're sick. You're sick with error. You need to have a revelation of the truth about yourself. Depression comes from ignorance of the truth. That's why no pill could get rid of depression. No psychologist could get rid of depression. No psychiatrist could help you with depression. I don't care what they study. They cannot help you. You need the truth. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, you shall know the psychiatrist. You shall know the psychologist. No. You shall read mind science. No. Hmm. You shall sit in your room and quote 20 times a positive statement you don't believe. No. He said, you shall know the truth about you and about what God says about you. The truth about the product that the manufacturer made. And that truth, when you know it, suddenly it will make you free. Even if you don't want to be free. Woo! It'll make you free. Because you will disbelieve everybody around you. <laughs> you are not free until you can ignore everybody's opinion. The truth makes you free. Now, where does this truth come from? I want to read this last scripture. Matter of fact, there's two scriptures I want to read because one of them is, in the, in the, in the, is a statement that you're going to finally understand it. Where does truth come from? Write this down. Truth comes from the source of anything. Truth comes from the source of anything. Now, what does that mean? That means the only element or entity that knows the truth about a thing is the source from whence it came everything else is opinion so the manufacturer of a product is the only one that knows the truth about it therefore you should not even allow people who used it to be the source of your information about it. Amen. Now let me try this again. This, this gets a little deep here. Don't allow people's experience to become your source of information about a product. Because not everybody had a good experience with it. Come on. Some folks will, I don't believe in certain types of television. I don't believe in certain types. I wouldn't buy, I'll never buy this kind of car again. That's their opinion. Maybe they put the wrong gas in the thing. Didn't know how to operate it. And they want to judge all the man's cars based on their ignorance of vehicle gas. I hope you hear me today. Someone says, well, I've been praying for a long time. I didn't get healed. Don't measure healing by your neighbor's healing. Or by your neighbors not getting healed. Don't measure it. You deal with the manufacturer. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, if you never get healed, if you know the manufacturer, healing doesn't matter anymore. 
don't use experience of other people go get your own experience from the manufacturer let him talk to you the source of truth is the manufacturer of the product and so in order for God to let man know the truth about himself man he couldn't send an angel please stay with me for two minutes he couldn't send Gabriel he couldn't send Michael he couldn't send none of the 24 elders he couldn't send nobody he had to come himself why because only the manufacturer knows the whole truth everybody say the whole thing the whole. come on say the whole truth you know, some folks get little pieces of things. But when you get the source, you get the whole thing. And Jesus is the manufacturer, the source of all human creation. The Bible says all things were made by him. How many? All. That means in nature, in creation, in humanity, in every kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, and reptile kingdom, and ocean kingdom. Every kingdom he made. So only the manufacturer knows the truth about everything let's read what he says verse 36 so if the son the manufacturer comes and tells you the truth then what happened you are free indeed Lift your hands, thank God for the manufacturer. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you got to even be careful about what your priest tells you. Because your priest ain't the manufacturer. That's why you got to be like those believers that Paul spoke to from Berea. When Paul preached, Paul was a great preacher, but they didn't believe Paul. They sat and said amen and everything else. And when Paul left the city, they went to their houses, the Bible says, picked up their own Bible and check to see if what he said was true clap your hands somebody don't just shout at everything you hear most of the theology that I have grown, grown up under was not the truth but it was true that they taught me those things but it, what they taught me was not truth that's why there are many people in the quote-unquote church that are in deep bondage because the believer, you, did not check what the preacher was saying. Measure everything anyone tells you by the manufacturer's manual. And if it doesn't line up, just smile and say, that's his opinion. Hallelujah. Oh my, time to close. I'm sorry. Just let me give you the scripture. You got to come back here next Sunday to get the rest of it. <laughs> Romans 3 verse 4. It's the last scripture. Oh my. This is going to last. Just this session on truth and principle is going to last for about two months. I tell you, there's just so much here to learn. In the book of Romans. Oh, get ready to shout now. Romans chapter 3 verse. I don't know if you can handle this. Verse 4. Romans 3 verse 4. Now don't say nothing if you're reading it now. And I guess you can't help it, but you can shout if you want to. Romans chapter 3 verse 4 says what? Stop right there. That's enough. Shout in time. It said, let God be true. Who? Let God be true. And what? Every man a liar. Clap your hands, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Make a little noise for me. Come on, give the Lord a thanks for this morning. Let God be what? And every man. That means if a man give you an opinion of you or of your situation, don't believe him. 
check first with the manufacturer. Imagine all of these years you believed your math teacher. That's why you quit maths. Your science teacher told you, well, you don't have a mind of science, so you better go be an artist. And you believe that. And that dream you had to be a doctor has gone because some man lied to you about who you are and what you cannot do. I hope today that you would be set free by the truth. And by the time we finish this series, there's going to be a transformation. I'm guaranteeing you this in the world. Because I am going around October to begin back in Scripture. I've already started. We're going through the entire Bible and pull out all of God's principles. In other words, the truth about everything. And apply them to life again. So that those who were zeros, like someone said, will recognize that they are two thousands or two fifties locked under someone's opinion of zero. Let God be true. And every other retailer, a liar. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray. Clap your hand while you stand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, for those of you who are watching this program on television and TBN and down in Guyana and other countries that get this program in South Africa, I want you to know that this message is nothing new. But it was hidden by other people's opinions. I pray today that even as we pray here in this auditorium, that you in your own life would stop believing people and start believing your manufacturer. Go back to the source and find the truth about yourself. Amen. Let's hold hands together and pray. Now remember, the person you're touching is only a fact, so you better handle them very carefully. Because you might be working with their company in the future. You didn't get that. I mean, you don't know who you're touching. You may go to their school, send your kids to their school, they're going to build in 10 years. You don't know. You're going to go to their law firm and, and give them business because they're going to be your lawyer, so you better be nice to them now. Hallelujah. You're holding the hand of a fact that's on their way to the truth. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You're holding the hands of a fact that's on their way to the truth about themselves. Let no man despise your youth because you ain't finished growing yet. Let no man trap you saying that this is the highest you'll ever go in your company because they don't know who's working with them. Don't stop at where other people give you an award because there's one who has a reward for you say thanks for the awards but keep moving towards your reward amen. amen men can only give awards but the manufacturer gives rewards father we pray for everyone in this room you know exactly what they needed to hear we heard your voice I pray now for every man and woman no matter what their age to get in touch with the soul of your purpose for their lives oh God make us uncomfortable with other people's measurements of us make us uncomfortable with people's opinions of us make us uncomfortable with what we have already been doing for there's so much more Thank you, God. Thank you, great manufacturer. Thank you, creator of all mankind, for opening our eyes today. And we give you praise. 
bless this word to our hearts and as we listen to it again and again and again may it wash our brains from the brainwashing we had from the past and give us back the washing of water by the word and tell us the truth in Jesus name bless those who are watching this program the millions who are crying out for the truth about themselves oh Lord reveal to them right now as they watch this program who they really are in you cancel the opinions of their parents their stepmother and father cancel the opinions of their teachers and their bosses and those they work for cancel the opinion of society and those who have been prejudiced against them and racist and all these demeaning things father in today let that freedom come cancel those things in their lives Lord and let the truth come to them come to you now may you know what he knows about you for you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free lift your hands and thank God right where you are right now thank you Jesus amen thank you Lord thank you thank you Lord